I'm now in Tabriz in northwestern Iran. I've come here because I decided that my original route around the Iranian coast on the Caspian wasn't really feasible or as interesting without sailing as an activity. So I decided I'd advertise for a travelling companion on the Lonely Planet Forum in Iran um, and I got a reply from a Canadian of the name Chris Clock and I'm going to be meeting him in Tabriz. This is by no means a complete diversion from the Caspian. I will be returning there to visit some of the interesting sites along the coast. I just realised the amount Iran has to offer and the fact I won't be filling my time with sailing on the Caspian and the impracticality of camping alone and the desire for some company. I've just been out to grab some food and whilst I was out I got chatting to a group of Iranian youths who were probably between the ages of 14 and 16 and they were very friendly, one of them spoke really really good English and they were very forward in telling me how they, they loved the idea of living in the West and how they didn't like the Republic of, or the Islamic Republic of Iran. They were slightly more forward than I expected and slightly more open in their almost contempt for the place where they live. They said the problem is, you know, it's the Islamic Republic of Iran um, and they were wearing designer clothes. They asked me if I had a girlfriend. They, they said, you know, it's only a problem if they catch you with a girl here, indicating that, you know, everyone has the desire, everyone, <laughs> everyone attempts it. It's just if you get caught, it's a problem. Um, and they were all saying they wanted to leave Iran and come to England. From Tabriz, Chris and I travelled to Tehran and began a whistle-stop tour of some of the most beautiful cities of Iran. After Persepolis, Chris and I parted ways and I headed north back to the Caspian to continue my trip. Zali is also famous for its freshwater lagoon, which is the largest freshwater lagoon in the world. I'm on my way to Anzali Lagoon. This is quite a contrast how I plan to be doing this trip.
yesterday I had a bit of a scary experience and I nearly had my bag stolen. I was getting out of a taxi and uh, my bag was in the boot and he just drove off. Uh, I ran, off, ran down the street after him for quite a distance until um, a guy in a very fast car pulled up and said get in and we chased him for probably about a kilometre and caught up with him and I managed to get my bag back. In the end I was very lucky and I think Iran's probably the one place where I didn't really expect this to happen. They have very low crime rates and the people are just so friendly. So it was uh, quite disconcerting. However, after I'd been rescued by this guy in a car, his name was Reza, uh, he, he invited me to go and cruise around the streets of Rush, the city I was in, with him in order to forget this bad memory and to replace it with good ones. Once we got going, he showed me what it was like to be a young person in Iran and what the guys do to try and get the attention of the ladies. And he would cruise around in his flash car pulling up to cars with women in them, roll down the window and shout something in Persian, presumably some kind of chat-up line, and, and they sort of race around the streets, just going in circles, just trying to catch up with the, each other's cars, and it's quite a bizarre kind of uh, courting on the road, with, at the expense of all the road laws, and quite dangerous. So apparently um, lots of young people have accidents in Iran, and it's not surprising considering it seems to be the the road seems to be the main place that they can get dating opportunities. Um, I was also surprised at the attitude towards women. It was in a society where it's very, very conservative, it was surprising to see um, such objectification of them by, um, by Reza and his friends. Um, and not, not at all surprising in a Western sense because we have it all the time. But I was talking to a girl in a taxi only the day before and she said that she thought Iranian boys were bad and that they, all they thought about was sex. Um, I was quick to point out to her this was not particular to Iranian men, but I see what she means in that these, the, the system in which they live seems to place women as sort of unobtainable and therefore objectifies them in that sense. And it, it, despite the attempts of the hijab to and the shadow or whatever other co coverings they wear to sort of take away any sexual attraction. It seems to have done the opposite. Um, and it's, it's quite strange to see the, how they, they cruise along the streets trying to pick up women, listening to Western songs uh, with very misogynistic lyrics. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's, it's very, very strange. From Ramsar I headed eastwards along the Caspian coastline and towards the Turkmen border with the intention of crossing into Turkmenistan. I'm back in Tehran now. I got to the Turkmenistan border but despite what the London Embassy had told me they weren't able to issue me a transit visa even though I had a letter of invitation. Even more annoyingly, I had to sleep overnight at the Turkmen border post because the Iranian border had closed. After that, I got back to Tehran and went to the Turkmenistan consulate to try and apply for my transit visa, which in theory should only take about 24 hours. However, I got there to find that it's closed for another four days, uh, which leaves me with serious problems concerning the amount of time I have left and money as well. Therefore, I'm having to seriously consider whether I can continue and whether it will be in any way enjoyable or useful to continue because I may just be travelling a lot of the time because, because of the time constraints I have now. I'm having to consider maybe whether I will fly home um, because there doesn't seem to be much point in continuing and looking at the cost of flights to Kazakhstan it's much more expensive to fly to Kazakhstan or significantly more expensive to fly to Kazakhstan than it is to fly to England. I'm back in my hotel room in Tehran and I've decided that I'm going to continue my trip. I've managed to find a fairly cheap flight to Kazakhstan. So in a couple of days I'm going to fly out to Aktau on the coast of Kazakhstan. The reason why I've chosen to continue is because I've put way too much into this trip to back out now. I've put hours and hours of work into planning this and I mean I made a boat for this trip even if I hadn't had a chance to use it. And more than that, I've looked back at the footage I've got already and I don't want to throw that away. Um, and despite the bad times I've had, I've also had some really good times and I want to make the most of the time left. On a lighter note, there's a very good reason why I shouldn't return to England right now. 
I was walking down the street after having decided that I was going to Kazakhstan and I picked up a copy of the Tehran Times and they have um, a little scoreboard in the corner because it's the World Cup for the last match played and I was unfortunate enough to see this in the corner which is not great news for England and is not something I want to go back to. Um, so I think I'm going to stay out of the country for a bit longer while the uh, English nation gets over its humiliation.